Welcome to Conversations from St. Norbert College, a program that encourages good discussion in our community on today's local and global issues. Now, your host for Conversations from St. Norbert College, author, professor, and nationally known sports economist, Dr. Kevin Quinn. Welcome to Conversations from St. Norbert College. I'm Kevin Quinn. Our special guest is Abbott General Thomas Hahn Gretinger, and we'll discuss the Norbertines International Meeting known as the General Chapter, or Day of Pentecost, which will be hosted by St. Norbert Abbey and held at St. Norbert College this summer. Every six years, delegates from all Norbertine abbeys, priories, and houses around the world gather in dialogue, consider proposals, and assess their common life. There are approximately 1,400 members of the Norbertine Order living in 23 countries around the world, including South Africa, India, Australia, France, the Czech Republic, Great Britain, and Brazil. Representatives of the Norbertine Sisters and Lay Associates also have been invited to attend. Thomas Hahn Greitinger was elected the 64th Abbot General in Rome in 2003. Abbot General, welcome to our program. Welcome. <laughs> well, let me start off by uh, asking you what an Abbot General does. Well, it's a difficult question, but uh, my main task is to govern the uh, the whole uh, order. In, uh, I'm sitting in Rome in the General Aid and uh, I have uh, some confreres who are helping by this, uh, by this task. Uh, I'm responsible, you can say, uh, to keep the order together, to, to have the, uh, the contact to all the houses, to be in contact with the confreres, to look uh, if there are any uh, problems in the guidance or leadership of the houses. And then uh, you have to act and to handle um, in a form of contacts, of visits, and uh, visitations, and elections, and so on. So tell us a little bit about the Norbertine Order. Not everybody watching may be uh, familiar with that. So uh, what's their history? Uh, what are the charisms, etc.? cetera? Yeah. Our order is uh, founded by St. Norbert uh, in the 11th century, exactly 1121, in a house, in the first house in French, in Prémontré, and so started uh, a first community there. Uh, it was a, a monastic lifestyle in the beginning, and uh, later on, uh, St. Norbert started as uh, Archbishop in Eastern Germany. So um, we have from the beginning in our order two elements, the more uh, uh, contemplative lifestyle in communio, in community. And we have uh, also from Norbert's side, from Norbert's inspiration, this strong um, inspiration, in, this strong mission to the pastoral work, to the mission work outside. So uh, that is a specificum of our order to bring both together, so living together in a community and to go out and to work for the people of God and to bring them the message of God. So when we think about uh, many uh, other orders, they have more of a monastic lifestyle, but the Norbertines are canons general. Uh, wh what's that? The canons... Uh, regular, were, I'm sorry, uh, canons regular. The, the canons regular were from the beginning mostly uh, order of uh, priests and with a strong accent of uh, pastoral work. Um, and, uh, but from the beginning, the accent was very strongly to live together. The secular canons, they are living for themselves, but the regular canons, they have a, a regul, regular a, a rule. And uh, we have, uh, Norbert has uh, jo uh, chosen the rule of St. Augustine to live after this rule together in community. And this is a very strong accent to live together, to pray together, to have a wonderful liturgy, and then to go out for the work. That is uh, the specificum of uh, the canons. You mentioned uh, St. Augustine. Uh, he's a major figure in the Catholic Church, sure. uh, but he's of particular importance to the Norbertines. And uh, St. Norbert followed uh, some of the teachings of St. Augustine, is that correct? Yeah. That is correct. Uh, St. Norbert was looking uh, in which way he can, he can form his new order. This was a new experiment uh, between the monks and between the secular priests to build a new form of living together. And he thought that uh, St. Augustine has the best rule uh, for such a, a form. He was coming um, from a canon institute in Xanten in Germany. 
So he has a background of Augustine, Augustinian uh, spirituality. So he thought it would be the best form. Uh, it is an open form. It is uh, um, a very strong accent of the of the uh, community life. So he thought with this rule he can do the best start of for his new order. And what distinguishes the Norbertines from other <clears throat> Catholic orders such as the Jesuits or the Dominicans or the Franciscans? Yeah, there is. Um, uh, each order has. Uh, his own history, his own founder charisma. So for Norbert was a charisma in his time, uh, it was uh, the time of the reform of the church to, to begin uh, with the reformation of the church, but uh, to begin with the priests, with the, with the clergy, they should start with the reform. They uh, should come together, to live together, to live what they are preaching as community, as priests, and then to go out. This was, um, from the beginning, the most accent of St. Norbert, the reform, reformation, the reform of the church. And that was a couple of hundred years before what we you know, Martin Luther and the Reformation, is that? And it was uh, in the 11th century, so it was uh, long before. Interesting. Now, you grew mm. up in Germany, is that correct? Yes. <laughs> so how does one get to be Abbot General of the Norbertines? The, I was born in, 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 uh, in Ulm, there is a, a town in the south of Germany, and I uh, entered in my abbey in, uh, in the Bavaria, East Bavaria, uh, called uh, Windberg Abbey, when I was 20. So I started the normal studies and the normal life to, to come in in a, in a community in a, as a religious, then as priest. Then I started to work in the youth area, the youth education for many years. And then I was elected for uh, prior de regimine uh, several times, and then later on as an abbot of my abbey. And uh, 2003 I was elected in Rome from the uh, extraordinary general chapter to the abbot general. <clears throat> and it's a lifetime appointment, or is it for a certain number of years? It is, uh, uh, in our constitution is written, the abbot general has to resign um, by the general chapter after his 70th birthday. So next year that it's too early to resign. <laughs> <laughs> I think perhaps the U.S. Congress could learn from the Norbertines in that, in that regard. So uh, uh, if, I, if I do the math correctly, you uh, grew up uh, not long after World War II was over, probably your, your earlier memories. Well, what was it like to be in Germany during that time? I was, I was born uh, during the war, 2000, uh, 1943. So... Um, it was uh, in the beginning a very hard time, and, uh, and uh, then I, 53, I started with the school, the school uh, formation, and uh, yeah, uh, what can I say to this uh, time? So it is, was uh, uh, in Germany. It was uh, was coming up the, the economy and all this, is, uh, and. But um, the beginning was, uh, I remember as a, as a child in my family, this was very poor, it was very uh, not so easy for my mother. My father died in the war, so it was very difficult to start. I, I, I mean, I can only imagine. I mean, most Americans have really no idea what it must be like to pick up and live after mm -hmm. something so cataclysmic. Mm -hmm. And I'm guessing that the uh, that the, the church and the abbeys probably played an important role in Germany at that time in helping getting things uh, back together. Yes. Is that what attracted you to to become a Norbertine? Yeah, I, it was a, for me it was a, uh, I was in contact with a, with a teacher in my school and uh, he uh, has contact with this abbey, and so with uh, visiting him, I could visit his uh, this uh, abbey. So there was a contact to this uh, abbey. It was a small abbey, a small community, but uh, a vibrant community because it was German and Dutch people are living together. This was uh, was me attracted, and also um, the liturgy in this time. Uh, what uh, this small group was uh, doing. In a, in a good form, so they attracted me the community life of this, of Windberg, of my abbey, and also what they are doing uh, in, the, in the field of liturgy. 
Well, you, you mentioned uh, community uh, a couple of times, and I think that anybody who comes on campus here at St. Norbert College, mm -hmm. um, well, first they'll hear about uh, Comunio here, but also you feel it. And uh, when we interview candidates for uh, professor positions, et cetera, um, they will always, always will mention that. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean, it is one thing that really unites the, uh, the Norbertines around the world. Although there's more autonomy, from what I understand, for the various Norbertine houses than there are for some of the other, uh, for some of the other um, uh, orders, yes. which must provide some challenges, I think, as yeah. as the leader for the whole uh, yeah. for the whole order. This is uh, for our, for our order typical as all the old orders, the Benedictine sisters, uh, sisters, the Augustinian, that uh, each house in our order is independent, autonomous, autonomous house. So the leadership as abbot general is from one side is easy, and the one other side difficult because. Uh, each house has to look for themselves, is responsible for all things for themselves. So uh, I have not to govern a house. Uh, on the other side, it is difficult as Abbot General um, to, uh, uh, f because uh, I cannot go direct in, in the, in the, uh, in the ma uh, matters of the, of the house. Uh, but it is more um, from your own personality, from your own, uh, what, you, what you want to, to bring in. Uh, more indirectly to the to the in this uh, indirect form of, of leadership, uh, I more uh, I compare it always with in Germany I more uh, uh, a president than a chancellor. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so in this sense. Well, I think in Germany, if you're president or chancellor, uh, other countries are now asking you for money. So maybe that's a, that's another thing that's uh, also <laughs> that's quite similar. Question, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, well um, yeah. you know, we're at an interesting time, I think, in uh, the Catholic Church's history. And um, especially in Europe, it's very different than it was w when you were growing up. Uh, what do you see... Uh, as the future for the Catholic Church in Europe and in the United States, where do you think we're going? I think uh, for the moment uh, uh, the situation is uh, something is changing in the in the in the church. Uh, I think especially the Church of the United States has a, a difficult time behind behind them, but uh, now they are uh, looking forward to uh, uh, to. Uh, Establish again uh, this uh, ecclesiastical life in the parishes. Into, um, I think there are a lot of, of uh, uh, a lot of energy in the church still in the, in the, in, the, in the church, and uh, a lot of, of visions to to uh, to go forward and to. Uh, but uh, it is always difficult to compare uh, both both. Uh, uh, Churches in Europe, in 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 the in, in United States, I think, uh, especially in my country, in Germany, uh, we have a very hard year. The last year, with all these conflicts and and uh, so that was that was for us a new uh, a new uh, uh, challenge to 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 overwin all these these problems. What was in in the, the states some years before. So, but uh, I think it was a, a necessary. Uh, a necessary development uh, to 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 clear all things and to uh, to to go back uh, to our uh, profound mission what we have to be really uh, for the for the people and to help them on their way to God and I, I, for me this in our in our rule is said by Augustine we are living one mind and one heart on the way to God that is uh, I think that it's good for our community life, but this is also our task, what we have to do to bring the people on the way to God. And I think uh, after all these troubles in the, in the countries, uh, uh, we have to look to, to, do all, to bring all our energy to, in this task to bring the people on the way to God. What, what special role do you think the Norbertines will play in, in that? Um, from what I understand, <clears throat> there are uh, quite a few uh, young people who have, in recent years, uh, joined various uh, various abbeys in Europe, and actually there are a few here in, in the United States for which that's true. So there's there's clearly some sort of invigoration, mm -hmm. enlivening. Um, do you think there's a special role that this generation, the next generation, the young people will play in mm -hmm. in uh, 
in, in the future of the church and uh, through the Norbertine so Order? I'm, I'm very happy to, to, to see uh, the, the young people, that their vocations, that their young people are coming in our, to our uh, houses, especially in California, but also if I look to India or to, to uh, Africa, there are growing communities. We have also communities who are more uh, dying, or, but uh, this is, uh, I'm very happy and, uh, that uh, young people are joining our order. I think uh, we have a good program for, uh, uh, especially in the church, to work uh, as priests, to live together as a community. That is our strength, our, our, our force, to live together and uh, uh, then to work uh, together, centered in the community, it means centered in Christ, to, to live together and then to work uh, uh, to the outside with the people. I think this is a, a very good program for the future also. To, and, and all the, these priests uh, that are struggling in their parishes. Uh, we have always a background of a spirituality, of a community, of a, a center. We are centered uh, in this uh, living together. I think it is our, our strength and our power. And of course, to bring that to the rest of the community, you, I, I mean, here uh, the the Norbertine priests here are very active in the in the yes, parishes yes, and in yes, various yes, types of ministry. Yeah. Um, you know, here. But in, with this background, always that they have a background in a in a good uh, uh, community, and they can always uh, go back to this and 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 start again to, to go out. Well, the role that the Norbertines have played in this community, I, I'm originally from the Chicago area and have, uh, I didn't grow up here, yeah. and I've come to understand how important the Norbertines were right here in, in Green Bay. Uh, it, it's hard to imagine anything in the last hundred years uh, that shaped the way we are now that hasn't had some sort of a Norbertine mm -hmm. influence. Uh, and the presence of the college here uh, provided a an opportunity for a lot of kids to mm -hmm. get college degrees mm -hmm. and and really change the world and that wouldn't have happened I mean literally would not have happened without mm -hmm. the without the Norbertines yes. so it, it's uh, kind of encouraging to to hear that this is happening uh, elsewhere I mean especially you know a lot of the Norbertine houses I, I understand were in uh, Eastern Europe and the former communist areas how did the how did the order survive that a lot of orders really struggled as a result. Yes. So um, what you have said um, about the, uh, the strong field of education and, and, and uh, teaching, it is a speciality. Uh, uh, it was uh, in a special form for the Hungarian uh, conference. They have uh, started always with schools and with uh, education work. It is not in all houses the same, but this is uh, what uh, the conference here in the States what they are uh, doing a, in a very good way to, in this, on this educational um, information level to, to, to work on this. And so um, in our orders, each house has to look what is uh, our task, our mission on this place where we are. So on the, here they could find this uh, 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 work in, in the, for, the, for the education of young people. This is a special thing here. So we are not a school order, but here it's realized in a wonderful way. So each house has to look what is our mission for this area, what is necessary for the church, what is necessary for, for this time. So, and I'm very glad and proud also that the conference can do this on this way in a, such a good way. <laughs> well, if uh, all those uh, folks who are visiting our Abbey here for the first time are going to be, mm -hmm. uh, I think, impressed by its beauty, uh, you know, walk around the grounds mm -hmm, is uh, mm -hmm. is a retreat in and of itself, <laughs> and uh, in an increasingly more frenetic world, uh, to be able to take time out and just enjoy mm -hmm. that, I think, is is more and more important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk a little bit about the general chapter. Sure. That's coming up, uh, you know, July and August, um, and this is only the second mm -hmm. time in history where it's going to be in the United States. So this is. This is a big deal, and it's the first time here at St. Norbert College. Yes. Um, so first of all, tell us what, what is the general chapter? Yeah. What is it? Uh, the general chapter is, um, you see our structure in the order, we have all uh, independent houses. So we need one structure, one occasion to come together. And uh, every six years we have such a meeting, a, a, a con convenient, con mm -hmm. Convention. Convention to come together and uh, 
Um, each house will send an, an, uh, the prelate, an uh, abbot, a prelate, and a delegate. So this is a form uh, of uh, all houses that are represented uh, for this meeting. And um, this meeting is in the first case is a confraternal meeting, a fraternal uh, uh, being together, and to meet themselves, to speak together, to exchange all the, the experiences, also all the problems in the houses, in the different houses. But the uh, general chapter is also the highest uh, juridical uh, authority in the order. And uh, they can do the dis main decisions for the order, especially elections for the abbot general, or to elevate a house to an abbey, to an independent abbey. This is um, only possible for the general chapter. So all the juridical things uh, will be, uh, will be sp will speak about all these uh, uh, juridical matters, if there is something on the table. Um, but uh, then the general chapter, after six years, have to look what is the status now, what is the situation of the order now, where we are now, and uh, what we want to, in which direction we want to go in the future. So in this sense, it's, it, it's um, a good uh, time for reflection, but also to look for a, a new orientation. There must be an enormous amount of preparation that goes into <laughs> something like this. Yeah, therefore, I am here for, the, for our, we have our meeting now for the preparation of the general chapter now. I mean, not only the agenda and, you know, what you're going to talk about and maybe more importantly, what you're not going to be able to talk about, <laughs> but just the logistics of, of yeah. getting this many people here and housing mm -hmm. them. Uh, there, I think, was it 1,400 will be here? Is that correct? No. Um, the, the whole order has uh, 1,400. Uh, ah, I see. It's, uh, and uh, maybe not 10%, so we have 120 will be here for the... In the no, it's impossible to bring all of them together, <laughs> but uh, the, the, the prelate of the house, the superior of the house, and the delegate of the house, it is, will be, he will be elected by the community and he will be sent to this uh, uh, general chapter. So we are about 120, 130 altogether, and uh, 80, 90 are members, are um, uh, chapter fathers, so-called, and uh, you mentioned in the beginning the sisters are invited, our mm -hmm. sisters, and uh, our... Uh, lay associates or the Norbertine associates members. There are five representatives of the different groups around our houses are represented by this meeting. So um, it was uh, uh, for us a, a surprise that we, can, that we can have this meeting here and these possibilities of this campus, of this college that is uh, wonderful for, I think it is a very good choice to, <laughs> to have it here. And, here, we have here all the possibilities and uh, accommodations for this meeting, I think. Yeah, it, it's in the summertime, and uh, yeah. <clears throat> northeastern Wisconsin is absolutely beautiful in the summertime. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, uh, <laughs> our students are on campus during the worst time of the year, really, which is, yeah. which is uh, the wintertime, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, what will be the main conversations that you think will take place yeah. during the chapter? So, uh, as I've said, what is the situation now? So we have to hear the report of the Abbot General about the status ordinance. It means the situation of the whole order now, what is going on, what was uh, changing in the houses and so on. And it is one part. Then another part is before the general chapter, we have a visitation in all houses. So the Abbot General has to give a report about all the reports of the visitation. Oh the, boy. So to bring all the, the questions, the problems, the difficulties, um, together and this will be a main point to uh, also to discuss uh, what is going on in the houses. A third point is um, we are working on a, a new uh, uh, constitutions for the order. Um, the last, uh, our constitutions are from 1968, 1970, so after 40 years something has changed in the world, in the church, in our order, in the theology, so to start again with new constitutions. and. Um, then we have to hear about all the reports for the, of our commissions. We have nine commissions in the order, different things, liturgy, juridical things, history. So, so to hear the reports of the work of these groups. And then we have to hear, uh, to discuss uh, the reports of all our international orders meetings. We have a prelates meeting, a juniors meeting, a magister meeting, sister meeting, and a Norbert. The Norbertin Associates meeting. So we hear all these reports and go in these reports. 
that's a lot of business to, to take place. <laughs> yes. I, I have to ask this. Um, every meeting I go to, somebody has a PowerPoint presentation. Will, will, yes. will, will you folks have the PowerPoint presentations um, too? I, I try to do this and I will do this in the, the, to, to bring, uh, especially the situation of the order, you can present in such a form. And uh, I need a help for this, but I will do this in this form. Well, I mean, so the Norbertines have a constitution that applies to every house, is that yes. every priory, every uh, yeah. every uh, abbey, and uh, have they always had a constitution? Or uh, yeah, we have uh, the statutes in the beginning, well, from the beginning, from the eleventh uh, century. So we have the the rule, Augustine rule, as a basic of all. Then we have the constitutions or the statutes, constitutions, in which is all uh, the, our spirituality, but also also all. Um, uh, juridical matters are in this is uh, is uh, uh, described, and we have um, a book of customs of each house themselves, in, in which manner in which are they are living in these constitutions in their way in this house at this time. So these three things is for every house is uh, fundamental. And, and does the does the Vatican uh, have to approve the changes in the constitution, or uh, is there a representative from the Vatican that will be here? No, it's, it's, uh, we are an uh, uh, independent order, we are uh, a papal, uh, under the uh, papal authority, um, but we have not to, uh, to uh, we have to, to uh, uh, present our constitutions to the, to the Holy See. That must be, you've, I'm guessing, met, uh, met, met the Pope at some point or another, huh? I have some, yeah, yes. He's a German. He's from German? <laughs> so, <laughs> he's and, and he was a, he was a young uh, theologian, a theologi professor for theology in my diocese, in where our abbey is, is uh, situated. So sometimes when he was a young professor, he came with his students in our house. So. Oh, but really? It is a long, long time ago. <laughs> Did you have any idea back then he, he might be Pope one day? No, I never, I never <laughs> thought this. <laughs> I, never, I, I never thought this. No, it is. Uh, um. I, I've uh, been fortunate enough to have uh, been able to interview uh, people who have met presidents, etc. And that's a question I, I yes. will often ask. Yes, yeah. And often they'll say, "Yes, I, I saw something there that yeah. made yes. it very clear that this person was going to be uh, president." Or yeah, going yeah, to that was at this time was absolute no. This was no idea. And even when <clears throat> when he was elected on the day, I was on the way to a, a, a conference in, in, in Netherlands, and they are coming out, oh, we have a German Pope, I said, how is it possible? <laughs> <laughs> and then after a while I said, oh, if we have a, a German Aboriginal, why we cannot, cannot have also a German Pope? <laughs> that's right. Well, you have so, to bring Oktoberfest to the Vatican. I think that's <laughs> yeah, it is, that is good, yeah. I think he, many people are sending this uh, uh, Oktoberfest stuff for this for him to, yes. Oh, I, I bet. We had a, uh, uh, a now retired uh, uh, professor here of history, and uh, he, uh, <laughs> he, all, he grew up in Bavaria, yes. uh, not far from Munich, and, uh, and the Pope. Was his uh, was his bishop at, at one point? Yes, he was bishop, archbishop of Munich at this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, well, you know, of course, this area is has a very uh, uh, large German influence here, and I mean, you can see the German uh, the German culture uh, throughout. Um, when all of uh, the Norbertines are here, will they have any opportunity to to tour uh, Wisconsin or uh, to to see what uh, see what it's like summertime in Wisconsin? So uh, first. Uh, we have to do the, the, the work of the general chapter, but in the time before and afterwards, the conference were invited uh, to, to extend their, uh, their stay here in the country and to, to visit this and, the, and that. Um, but it, it's up to the, to the conference. This, we have only these two weeks uh, to be together, to work, and um, then uh, we will see something around here, but uh, uh, the conference have the possibility to stay and to, to look, maybe to go to Chicago and other places and, uh, and uh, here and especially in the country, in the Wisconsin, to see some things. Uh, I want to thank you very much for, yeah. for being our, uh, my guest today. Yeah. Um, I hope you've enjoyed our show. Until next time, I'm Kevin Quinn. Best wishes for good conversations from St. Norbert College. 